Enzo Ferrari was very fond of his front-engine 12-cylinder cars. He resisted the V8 and V6 cars and a mid-engine layout in streetcars for many years, believing that a horse is supposed to pull a cart, so an engine, therefore, belongs in the front of a car. However, he eventually conceded with the introduction of the Dino, separating the Dino brand from the Ferrari name by giving it a separate badging. That eventually changed with the introduction of the 308, which was the first mid-engine V8 car sporting the prancing horse. The 308 was such a massive success that Ferrari had kept the V8 Berlinetta as its primary mainstream model ever since. An improved version of the car, known as the 328, was sold all the way up until 1989, and the 308 was also the basis for the 288 GTO, considered by many to be Ferrari's first real supercar. Clearly, the 308 was an exceptional car in its day. The 308 is a fairly small car. It's only about 44 inches tall, and it's also very light. When they were first produced, they were all fiberglass. And if you look back at some of the old videos we've done, we did a video all on the fiberglass 308s, so you should check that out. Uh, we also did one on the QV. So after the fiberglass came all steel-bodied cars, and at first they were all carbureted. Then, like this one, they started with the injected cars, and then they went to the QV. So this pretty much sums up all of the 308s that we've done. So now we've done fiberglass, QV, and injected. When these cars were sold new, they sold a lot of the GTS version because it was just really popular. But nowadays, the GTB has become more valuable because they sold a lot less of them, making them more rare. And then as far as the injected cars go, they only made them for two years. So they are also a bit more rare than your standard carbureted cars or even the QV. So the full name of this car is 308 GTBI, and it stands for three liter, eight cylinder, even though technically it's a 2.9 liter, but Ferrari just rounded up. Um, so three liter, eight cylinder, Grand Touring Injected. And it's funny because it's not really the standard Grand Turismo, Grand Touring kind of Ferrari. Uh, like for instance, nowadays, the GT cars are like the 599 and the F12, whereas the more sporty cars are the 430, 458. Uh, and I guess this one fits somewhere right in between. It's, it's not quite a touring car. The luggage space is a little smaller. You can fit a couple overnight bags in this section, but uh, it's not quite the same as a 599 or some of their other uh, famous touring cars. But it's not quite the small, agile, 430s and 360s. It's it's right in that perfect little middle zone. This particular car is a US version and there's a couple easy ways to tell just visually off the bat. So the big glaring one is the bumpers. Back in the day, the DOT required for US cars to have these big crash safety bumpers and they have a big steel rod through them. Um, and they have these shocks. So if something were to hit the car or you hit something in the car, uh, then it the, the steel rod protects you and the shocks absorb some of the impact, but it also makes these big giant bumpers. So what a lot of people have done and what, what my dad did back in the day when he owned a large body shop was you basically uh, compress the shocks to recess the bumper into the body more and it looks more like a Euro car. Um, and that's all personal preference. A lot of people don't mind the bumpers and some do. So there is an easy solution to the big bumpers if you don't like them or if you do, then it's just part of the car. Uh, another way to tell is on the side of the car, the Euro car side marker lights are little dots and then the US cars are rectangles. So if you see a car, that's how you tell the difference between a Euro and a US version. The 308 is definitely not the fastest Ferrari, but that's really not the point. Uh, there's something about driving these cars with their shorter shift points and the engine right behind you. It's just an absolute blast. And you're really not focused on how fast you're going more than the driving experience. Back when this car first came out, 
the EPA and DOT had enacted some seriously strict regulations and they had a 55 mile an hour speed limit. So on US cars like this one, the speedometer is even pretty unique in the fact that it goes up to 80 miles an hour and after that it just it's a red bar. Um, it doesn't even show you how fast you're going. And part of that was the US deciding that when you have the speedometer that shows, you know, 100, 180 miles an hour or whatever it is, uh, then people try and test the how fast can I get this car to go. But if they didn't have that, then they wouldn't drive as fast, which is silly, but it's something they tried. Uh, the speedometer also has a little circle around 55. So you know when you're going the speed limit. It's, it's all silly, but it's not the fastest car anyways. You're not really looking at the speedometer. I mean, it has plenty of get up and go, don't get me wrong, but you're really more just focused on the driving experience than you are the exact number, the speed you're going. This car has some serious points going for it. First off, it's in blue. And these cars, in my personal opinion, are stunning in blue. Uh, as you might know, I have a thing for blue cars anyway, so maybe I'm a little biased, but uh, general consensus, they're pretty cars in blue. It also has only 7,000 miles. It actually just a little bit over, about 7,050 miles. Super low miles. Uh, it was owned by one lady for almost its whole life, up until last year when the current owner purchased it. And then he's more into the modern cars. He realized he never drove this, so now we're selling it. So it was almost a one owner its whole life. Uh, it was originally blue. At some point it was painted red and then back to blue. So it originally was blue, even though this is a repaint, but it was a repaint done in really good quality. So it's just stunning paint, good interior. It's overall a really nice car. And driving it around this morning, it's a blast. I mean, it does everything right. It does what you want it to. Light clutch, shifts well. It's just a great car to drive. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for a lot more content we have coming very soon.